This is Dune Talk, a DuneNewsNet.com production. Join us now for the latest Dune news, reactions, and lively discussions. Welcome back uh, to the second episode of Dune Talk uh, this week. It's been a exciting week, uh, to, say, to say the least. It's, uh, it's all happening at, at once. Uh, yesterday we talked about the, the first look at Dune on IMAX. And today we're going to get uh, deep into the to the trailer. So this is uh, Marcus, uh, editor in chief at DuneNewsNet.com, and I'm here today with Simon. Hello, people. Sorry, I I'm I'm looking at that monitor because that's where <laughs> the trailer is going to be. So I should look at the camera. My bad, guys. Yeah, and we have uh, Mark from Dune Info. Hi, how are you doing? And uh, we're joined today by Johnny. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. Thank you. Cool. So, yeah, as mentioned, we have uh, our main topic today. We're just going to focus entirely on the new Dune main uh, trailer that was uh, released online yesterday and, and the day before in the IMAX event. So let's get into some movie news. Dune movie news. Okay. Um, yeah, let's start playing the trailer. All right. So opening shot with the ornithopters and then the, the narration of uh, the planet Chani. Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. Rolling over I the still sands, get goosebumps. You can see spice in the air. <laughs> the outsiders ravage our lands in front of our eyes. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. This is some, some really, really heavy stuff. I'm, I'm surprised that they Which actually showed it in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> Dune oh boy. Hey, Duncan, can I trust you with something? Yes, always. You know that. I've been having dreams about a girl on Arrakis. I don't know what it means. Dreams make good stories. But everything important happens when we're awake. Hey, you. Put on some muscle? I do? No. We are a house of Trades. There is no call we do not answer. There is no faith that we betray. Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. The Emperor asks us to bring peace to Arrakis. House Atreides accepts! I know you. There's something awakening in my mind. You need to face your fears. Come with me. You need to be ready. You never met Harkonnens before. They're not human, they're brutal. Duke suddenly sees too much. This is why Dune kill them all. God in heaven. Get everything with guns off the ground! Go! This is an extermination. They're picking my family off one by one. Let's fight like demons. I'm not the future of House Atreides. A great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it. But if your answer is no, you'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. My son. If anything happens, will you protect Paul? With my life. Together, can we stand a chance? Yeah. Yep. It's 
So let's start with um, with overall reactions. So, um, uh, Johnny, you, you weren't on yesterday's episode, so I know that you saw the trailer for the first time on IMAX screen. What, yeah. what was your uh, your first reaction? <laughs> um, I, I think really what struck me the most was that because of course this trailer came after we had already seen a good amount of footage. We saw the first ten minutes, and then we saw um, the Spice Harvester sequence, but. It definitely struck me as a big departure, I think, from the first trailer we got. Um, I'm still, like, struggling to even, like, the first trailer was a great trailer, and I really did enjoy it. I know there's been kind of, like, varied reactions to it and feelings about it over the last, like, 10 months. Um, but I really did like that trailer, but I think this one just, like, showed a lot more that I guess we weren't expecting necessarily. Like, the Dune, the first trailer looks very quaint compared to this one with regards to I think primarily uh, scale um, and as well as action I think there's of course a lot more action in this trailer but also just giving an idea of the sense of scale and the size of everything um, whether it's action sequences or just basic you know like establishing shots or spaceships and things like that um, I think that this one and seeing it on an IMAX screen for the first time that's what struck me the most Mark, how, how about you? You're, uh, well, you also saw it on my IMAX, but reactions to the trailer itself. Yeah, again, it's just, you know, that overwhelming sense of scale uh, on the huge screen. And uh, today, funnily enough, uh, a repairman came to have a look at my fridge and we got talking about June because I've got June posters everywhere uh, and I ended up showing him the trailer. And he was like, yeah, I probably go need to go see this now. When's it out? <laughs> so, you know, that was a, someone who you know, interested in sci-fi, but never really knew much about Dune. And from the trailer, he was very, very interested in seeing the film. Uh, so I think that speaks volumes for the, the quality of the trailer. And hopefully it will attract a lot more audience. And I, I don't think that the first trailer would have had that reaction for the, the guy. Yeah, yeah indeed. So, Simon, what, what were your thoughts on, on this second trailer? Very much like Johnny, I... I enjoyed the first trailer, but I think the first trailer was designed for fans. And this one was designed more for the general audience because you also kind of get what the storyline is without, you know, going in full details. But I feel like the first one hit special moments like the Ganja Bar, and we don't even get Ganja Bar in here or anything like that. I feel like the first one was designed for us, like, Okay, here you go, guys. You wanted some footage, but we're going to give you something better. And now I haven't gone back to work since the IMAX event. So I'm curious to know what my coworkers are going to think if they saw it and be like, oh, okay, now I understand why you're excited about this movie. Because the first trailer, people were like, cool, I get, cool, I guess you like that. That's, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and I wonder if, if part of that is is about the fact that, you know, all four of us have seen it on the IMAX screen, like for the for the first time, and that's like a whole different I impression. Like, of course, the, the first first trailer, some people saw it in, in the cinemas, but it was originally released on, online, so everybody saw it uh, on the internet. And I do agree that that first trailer, it was, uh, you, you did get a sense of the of the scale, like all, all of the, the the sets, the details that went into the film, and like you, you could feel that this is, you know, like this is going to be a grand uh, spectacle. Uh, but uh, as you were saying, like for for newcomers, you know, they would be thinking, okay, what what's what's the story of Dune about? I was uh, writing about that uh, that yesterday in my first uh, first thoughts for the uh, for the trailer on on the site. So whereas that first trailer was like, you know, look at this this massive universe, and then. This trailer, you get more of that. Uh, you, you do get the action as well, but you have a cohesive um, story that, that's that's being told. So, w uh, beginning with the with the narration from uh, from Chani. There we go. Yeah. So Once uh, again, the IMAX scale for us. Sorry, people that weren't there, <laughs> really showed that scene off. I think. I mean, on the, on the screen I'm looking at the moment, the Foptas are barely little dots. Uh, <laughs> but you could definitely, <laughs> you definitely couldn't miss them on the IMAX screen. Yeah, um, and I think uh, it's always, uh, the, the beginning of this trailer is definitely similar to the beginning of the movie that we were shown. And um, it also, I, I think it's 
it's nice when you're starting something related to Dune as far as showing footage, like you're showing Arrakis, you're showing sand dunes, you're showing the environment um, and just kind of like setting that environment up. And this also reminds me, the shot in particular kind of reminds me of the, uh, it's not dissimilar to stuff we've seen from Villeneuve before, whether it's Sicario where you have the helicopters like or the planes going over the desert landscape and they're kind of like pan down or even Blade Runner 2049, um, you know, with K's spinner flying over different environments. It's definitely, you can tell right away it's, it's Villeneuve. Yeah, and one one thing I've I felt about I mean we don't get a good good view in this scene but we, we will get later like the the way these ornithopters have been designed like I, I feel that this is going to be the definitive uh, like image of the ornithopters in in my mind like uh, moving forward like the previous uh, versions you know it just doesn't uh, stand the test of time I think now with the technology that that they have in in this day of age it really gave Villeneuve the opportunity um, with the production and the design team to to get the perfect look and uh, and functionality for, for these because they, they talked about this from, from the beginning. They were going for realism with these these vehicles. I mean, of course, we're 20,000 years in the future, but these, these should be things that can really, really fly. And we, we saw some some great behind the scenes of, the, of that as well from the ornithopters. It looks like there's going to be a, a number of different versions. All right, so, so we get a little bit more sand. And I love the scale of the sand. Once again, I, I know I've said this the past three episodes now. It should have that big, epic Lawrence of Arabia. This is an environment that you need to get used to. And something that we didn't, I, I totally forgot to mention on our IMAX reaction was the spice is a character by itself. Mm hmm. And I feel like it's crucial. Like, here, I'll let you guys talk about that. And I feel like, I don't know if you can see my little cursor right here, but I feel like that might be some spice right there. A spice patch. Yeah. yeah. I just realized that. Yeah. I think hey, good <laughs> Uh, you, you should be uh, flying one of those ornithopters as, as a spy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have many times in my dreams, Marcus. Many <laughs> times. Uh, uh, Johnny, what what are your thoughts on the um, on just a view of the desert itself? Yeah. Um, again, I like that the way the shot kind of it tilts and reveals. I mean, just how massive because the ornithopters give some scale in the initial you know, the beginning of this shot, but then to show, you know, the vastness and the depth of it, it again, reminds me of the shot that we got in the teaser, the theatrical teaser, and then the, uh, the main, the first trailer, um, that shot of them just, you know, flying through the, towards the desert and the smoke in the distance. But I think this even adds more, I mean, it looks like just a, it looks endless, which it, it kind of is. But um, again, I think just establishing Arrakis early and, and giving that kind of, Again, scale uh, is is important. Yeah, what what comes to mind is is that um, um, that answer from from Villanova in the in the first um, uh, behind the scenes when they when he revealed the, the first trailer, like he was saying, like you know, you wouldn't uh, film Jaws in a swimming pool, yeah. like in the same way you, you would have to film uh, Dune in the real desert. And yeah, I think you do get an impression of the scale, and we we saw that in various points of the trailer. This this does feel. Feel, feel real like you you are and another thing uh, real quick is to your point you were just saying how it does feel and look very real and they did go out and film in the desert they've still shot it and captured it and and transformed it in a way where it it, it feels and looks very real but it also doesn't look like it's on earth like it yeah. still looks distinctly alien yeah i'd be interested to see any sort of behind the scenes stuff as like what how much is this is CGI and how much is this practical or or what? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Move on a little bit more. So there's our first look at Johnny, really. And we can see those eyes. That's like <laughs> right away I was like, well, hello, Zendaya, and your beautiful blue eyes. Yeah. So, uh, Simon, what are your thoughts on the um, on the eyes of Ibad in, in this uh, in this movie? I think they look great. They're not 
it could have easily been a horrible, glowy, <laughs> bad early Photoshop layer kind of thing. But I think they look natural. Obviously, my brain knows, hey, they're not really blue. They're CG. But it's not squeegee that CG that screams in your face like, oh, my God, look at these eyes. Look at these eyes. They just go natural. Yeah, it's very subtle. Yeah, uh, and j just looking at the scene for the for the first time, the, the first um, thing I was thinking when when we see uh, Chani like this, and then she starts starts talking, is this completely almost subverts uh, expectations in in a way, because you're you're brought to feel like you know e even even as us we're 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 um, we've been been fans and we we've we read uh, Dune and seen other ap adaptations. Um, there, there's that always that feeling, you know, like uh, Arrakis, uh, the planet known as as Dune, is is basically like a, a hell. You know, it's a, it's a harsh, <laughs> in, inhospitable uh, world. You know, like it's uh, pe people people live live there in pre precarious conditions, and then uh, suddenly you, you see Chani here, and sh and she's smiling, and you know, it's it's really authentic uh, joy when she, when she's talking about uh, the beauty of of her planet, and I, I just thought that that was something completely new and it just like brought so much excitement for uh, e even when, when I saw this like in the in the IMAX uh, event of the full full scene uh yeah it just brought so much excitement so we're going to get dune but we're also going to get something completely completely new um thoughts on on this uh, scene Johnny yeah I, that's a great point um because you know, I think one of the most famous things from the original film, which is a film I haven't, I haven't even seen in its entirety. I've seen bits and pieces, including the opening, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. Um, You're a lucky if, man. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't plan on visiting it anytime soon, but what that movie opens with, of course, is princess Irulan, you know, giving her opening narration and just, you know, directly to the camera. Like there's no dynamism to it or anything like that. Uh, and in this, and that's how it is in the book as well, though, with the narration and that opening text, um, as far as the how the princess and, and those quotations are involved. I think um, what this is, it kind of, it does subvert it in a way, but also I think, you know, it's unexpected, I guess. I was, certainly wasn't expecting it. Um, but I think this is the perfect route to take with, and I think it makes sense from Villeneuve as a filmmaker, but also if you're making a Dune for a modern audience, like, you know, I, I have no idea who they would cast as Princess Irulan and, and, and what the the Empire, you know, the Emperor and all that's going to look like. But I think starting with Chani, starting with the Fremen on Arrakis, establishing like right away, okay, these are, and we're going to get more into that in just a second. But, you know, these people are oppressed. They have, um, you know, colonizers uh, taking over their planet, like, you know, just taking the resources and, and uh, you know, killing them and, and brutalizing them. I think that, you know, as, as dark as that might be or disturbing, I think that is an intriguing hook compared to, oh, this is the year, you know, 10,191 and this is uh, the planet. And, uh, you know, from, from the perspective of someone who is in a position of power, I think, this is a lot more compelling from a, a storytelling perspective. Mark, uh, th thoughts on the, the opening that they chose? Yeah, uh, similar to, to Johnny's thoughts. And as we discussed yesterday, it's it's fantastic to see Dune being present, represented from the point of view of the Fremen. Uh, all the other scripts and adaptations have always been the, out, the outsiders looking in and imposing their perspective on the Fremen and we finally get a Fremen talking directly to us about the beauty of their planet. Uh, fantastic opening and it seems obvious now why has no one done this for the past you know <laughs> 35 years and adaptations of Dune. <laughs> and uh, one one other quick comment is that the narration again not expected I, you know, I didn't expect Chani to be narrating and I didn't expect the the landscape shots we got and like the, the very very much just taking in like the natural like wonder and beauty of the world and along with that quiet kind of whispery whispery narration it reminded me a lot of um 
Terrence Malick for anyone, you know, that has seen his films or is like familiar with him. I love Terrence Malick, like Thin Red Lines, one of my favorite movies of all time, as well as Tree of Life. And uh, this is, I mean, it feels straight out of Malick. I mean, it's that kind of really, um, you know, what Villeneuve has been saying all along about just the, our connection with, you know, nature and, you know, our relationship to it. Um, I think that you're kind of getting that right off the bat and it's done in a way that is, uh, you know, economical, just gives you right into the world and the the relationships with, between these different groups of people, um, you know, and I, I think, we're, you know, we're going to get into more of that in this trailer and there's more of that in, in the beginning of the movie as well. And going to your point, uh, Johnny, about the the Emperor. So we, we don't have casting for the Emperor or we don't have casting for, for Irulan. Uh, but just in this trailer, we see this, like the, the richness. We're covering the, the Fremen. We're covering House Atreides, House, House Harkonnen. There's there's just so much there. And it's just mind-blowing to think that in the in the next movie, we're going to be introduced to even more mm -hmm. uh, of the of the universe. Uh, ho hopefully, we'll, we will get to see uh, the, the, the Emperor's uh, throne room as well. Yeah. There's something I just thought of when you guys were talking. Um, what if she's actually speaking to Paul in his dream? She could be. You know, kind of, hey, like, I don't know, some kind of connection that maybe she's having with Paul already, or maybe Paul, I don't know, maybe I'm just crazy and it's early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the other visions we've seen of Paul's vision of Cheney it's always been a little bit abstract and a face is not quite in focus or silhouetted. Yeah. Um, so this seems a little bit too, uh, too pretty and too calm. Yeah, too too, too uh, explicit, if that's the, the right word of um, you know Paul's vision of Cheney. Yeah. There's another thing that I really like about her opening up the movie and. It, we're already intrigued by her. So later on, when we see her in the movie, we're yeah. not just like, who are you? And now we understand why Paul's been fascinated about this character and this woman that he keeps seeing. So I think it's good for the audience already to know her before we already know Paul, because obviously we're going to spend more time with Paul than mm -hmm. Cheney in this half. Yeah, that's so really a really good point. Yeah, I think that that's that's the way they're going to build the connection. Like in the in the book, you know, you you know that Paul is is dreaming about this 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 girl. You don't you don't know her her name yet, but you don't get much much details. And I I see that you know through the dreams now they're gonna they're gonna build up that that connection so that when they do meet later in the film, you know that there will already be that uh, yeah that understanding of of each other. And it'll be the greatest love story that the internet will fall in love with. <laughs> Oh, no, no question. All right. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Just the camera movement also really beautiful. Yeah. When you take the some more of the spice. And like we were saying yesterday, the spice is just so beautiful to look at. You're right. And uh, I wasn't on yesterday, of course, but... Uh, so I don't know if this was mentioned at all, but this is this shot right here is the first shot of the movie. Um, at least what we were shown or told was the beginning of the movie is this, uh, yeah. which, you know, I th again, I think makes perfect sense. I mean, it's Dune. Uh, so starting right on Iraq is you're just showing uh, the sand blowing and the spice in the air. And, and uh, again, and then it jumps into what we're about to see um, and with Chani's narration, but beginning on this one, I think is a good, it's a very, you know, it's not, it's not overstating. I think it's for as big of a movie as this is, starting with something so simple is, is kind of cool. Mark or Marcus, any thoughts? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> okay. Was it, um, so in the first trailer, we did see sort of the, the dust motes uh, when Paul steps out of the the Ornithopter, and I think there was speculation at the time whether or not that was spice in the air, and this seems to confirm it that you know the, the orange specks floating in front of the, the lens is spice just there in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like how they've, they've made it, you know, like a, a part of the, the nature, the, the natural environment of, of the film, like the, the spice in, in, the, in the air, it's, it's, it's everywhere, and the reflection of the, 
I'm delighted as well. Next shot looks like one of the dream shots that Mark was talking about. More spice. Hey, that kind I of love looks like shot. That kind of looks like our artwork for the podcast, Marcus, doesn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I love that we get to see a lot of the spice. So, looks so good. Oh man. Now these shots. This is the dune that I imagine as a kid. Yeah. What do you guys think of these? Like just oh. Love it. Because <laughs> uh, in the first trailer, we saw the Spice Harvester, which is like very flat, almost like a box. Um, but these seem to be the Harkonnen Harvesters, um, which look very, very different and uh, kind of scary, I think. They should be scary. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a really, really menacing look. It's like there's, there's furnaces and like... Uh, fire that definitely does represent the, the character of the Harkonnens. <laughs> yep. And top left, um, just getting obscured by the clouds, is I think it's the bottom half of there of the Harkonnen carryall. Oh. Um, mm, yeah, I can see that which for sure. You, which you don't see in the trailer, but we got a bit more of a glimpse of in the IMAX preview. Yeah, yeah they're dropping uh, in yeah. the IMAX preview. We saw... Uh, which includes the shot from the IMAX event teaser of Verbon and the Harkonnens like walking yeah. out. Uh, and there's this massive, I mean, this airfield with all these harvesters and the harvesters are being like dropped off and transported by these other vehicles that are, as you pointed out, looks to be in this shot. Um, they're just like, they're flying through the air and then they're picking up and dropping off. And it's very, uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's definitely, I mean, the, just the aesthetic is uh, menacing and, and it's, it's, it gives you, it's unsettling, I think, compared to, especially compared to some of the things that we've seen with, you know, the Atre more Atreides designs or, or guild designs. Um, it, it just has a more off-putting energy to it. Yeah. A, a friend of mine, a June friend, referred to these ships as ticks, which I think <laughs> yes. is appropriate. Yeah. You know, they are sucking the life out of the planet, literally. Yeah. This talk right here is absolutely like, I was like, okay. I trust you, Denis, and now I'm like, thank you, Denis. Like, that <laughs> right there. Just the graininess, even in the costume design, and gorgeous. Yeah, and it, it does give that impression of, of the smog, because we know that um, um, the Harkonnens come from the their homeworld, uh, Gideon Prime, uh, where, you know, it's a very industrial homeworld. They've, they've done, uh, you know, a lot of... Uh, um, basically take, taking all the resources that they need for their, their home world. There's a lot of smog in, in, the, in the air, not a lot of sunlight, and it looks like basically they, they've brought their <laughs> uh, environment to, uh, to Arrakis in this case, like with all that, the, the, the smoke, uh, I guess the, these harvesters, they probably like have a lot of exhaust as well. Mm. Let me know if you guys want me to go to the next frame. Yeah, I mean... Um... That real quick, I mean, this and the previous shot, it's just, I think people, and even myself, I don't know, just because I know how Villeneuve is, you know, with his designs and like his aesthetics that he kind of goes for, I wasn't really sure what to expect from like the, like this costume, for example, like wasn't really necessarily, I was like anything I was expecting to see in this movie. Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely looks like, and I said this, before uh, I wrote about it. it, it it reminds me a lot of other, um, you know, Dune art, like fan art or concept art you might have seen like over the years from, you know, because Dune is one of those properties where anyone who's interested in, you know, visual design and, and concept art and things like that, I mean, they always have some, uh, some Dune inspired, you know, stuff in their portfolio. And this looks, um, you know, very, very comparable to some other things that we've seen, but still, you know, unique in its own right. Can I skip to the next one? Yeah. And there she is again. Yeah. I feel and, like that's the same shot that we got in the original teaser also. Yeah. Yeah. And, th and this, is, this is definitely an, an actual, actual shot of her out in the desert and in, in the, 
in, in the actual, um, in the still suits, like how, how she would appear outside. Another one of those beautiful shots. <laughs> it doesn't, that surprised me how in your face violent that got fast. And you can see like Fremen's getting attacked and it works. I mean, it's even more horrific when I put in slow-mo like that. What do you guys yeah. think of that previous shot? Yeah, I'm gonna... yeah it's brutal. <laughs> yeah. We, we saw uh, a little bit of that in the IMAX teaser that was posted right, last week. Um, but without the context, it was impossible really to know what was going on. But yeah, that just looks uh, violent. Mm -hmm. yeah, awesome. and I think, uh, go ahead, Sam. No, go ahead, Johnny. Um, yeah, just real quick adding to that, we did see a little bit of it last week, but as Mark pointed out, there was it was a very short glimpse and there was hardly any context to it. Here, the context is, uh, you know, the Harkonnens, or at least the Baron and, you know, the people in charge, they don't care about losing, like, soldiers or lives. Like, the lives are just meaningless to them. What, what the primary goal is, is to get the spice and to protect the spice and make profit off of it. Um, you know, uh, in the context of what we saw also in the opening, uh, you know, 10 minutes, the Fremen are attacking, you know, the Harkonnens. They're attacking them um, and just trying to destroy the spice and, and destroy their harvesters. Um, so as soon as they as soon as they see that they're under attack, these sh ships just drop rockets and like blow them up to try to stop them from getting to the spice, uh, regardless of whether or not their own soldiers are on the ground. What I was going to mention is uh, kudos to whoever edited this trailer also in that opening montage because they did an amazing job. So same shot as we saw in the original teaser. The Beast. And the teaser just looks perfect. <laughs> he was meant to play that he's role. A beast. But he's a really nice guy I've heard in real life. <laughs> yeah. More of yeah, and th this this I shot I was, this. I was I was saying before is it's uh yeah I'm surprised it's, it's in the trailer because th this is a really really heavy shot in 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 context of you know some things that we've seen happen in the world as as well, just like the, the brutality of, of the Harkonnens like the, these are basically murderous uh, uh, yeah savages in a way who who are like uh, p pillaging the, the the planet they have n no regard for like any of the local inhabitants, as, as Johnny was saying, like all they care about is like getting the, the spice for, for themselves. Um, Mark, what, what were your thoughts on, on this, uh, this scene of the, of the Harkonnen brutality? Yeah, so uh, this seems to be sort of a, an extended or clearer shot of something we saw in the original trailer. And I think it's, you know, I think Raban's beheading an Atreides soldier there. Yeah. Oh, he is. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, you can see these big uh, machete-like weapons. Yep. Yeah. And kudos. So this seems to be after the attack on the Atreides, I'm guessing. Yeah. Kudos on the editing part. Very Hitchcock-like. You see it swing, but you don't see the beheading. You see the flame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this, That's I mean, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, P How is this a PG-13 is my question, really. <laughs> what is it in England? Is it, because um, you guys don't have the same PG, what is it, a rating? Um, well, it's not rated yet, but the trailer, uh, the first trailer, not even this one, was rated 15, okay. which I'm not quite sure ha how. So, um, so I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be at least a 15 and, but I don't think they'd want to go higher than a 15 in the UK. No, I'm I'm surprised it's only a, a 13 here in the States. But that last shot, that one, wow. <laughs> and They're then, not holding back very much, it looks like. Yeah. If this is just the trailer, I'm curious to see how brutal <laughs> it's going to be. Uh, that looks like a crest knife, guys, right? Or am I just going yep. crazy? 
Yeah, I mean, the shape, everything. Yeah, it looks pretty. Uh, and the the blood yep. and the, dripping off of that. She yeah. she can uh, sheath a Chris knife now because it has been blooded, certainly. Yeah, <laughs> and I forgot who it was. I saw yesterday. Um, on, I think it was on Facebook. There was an ad for the official Dune Chris knife you can buy now. Yeah, as I go yes. prop. Yep. Love that shot right there. Yeah. And one quick comment as we're moving along here about the the blood, uh, just in general. We'll see more of it throughout the trailer, but I just I know typically, and I don't know how the MPA is just a, a mess as far as rating and how they decide certain things in the U.S. Um, but the uh, I know a lot of times if there's blood, like in you know action scenes, whether it's you know gunshots or stat, you know sword fighting and that kind of stuff, usually they it ends up being rated R. Um, and of course, this is rated PG-13 and says for strong violence. But I mean, we we saw like a, a surprising I was that was one of the things that kind of stood out to me is with regards to like the fight scenes or just the violence in general was the like it wasn't bloodless like you might see in like a Marvel movie or like a Star Wars or something like that. Like it's fairly, uh, you know, intense in that regard. Uh, I know a lot of people when when they when they heard the PG uh, thirteen rating in the in the states, they were saying, uh, "No, Dune, Dune should be should be rating R." Like, are they going to tone it down? And I, I think it's it's really about the, the approach. I mean, from from everything we've seen, we we are going to see like how uh, harsh this world is, like the uh, malevolence of the the Harkonnens, like the uh, pe pe people be being being brutally uh, murdered. I think the, the difference is basically how they're, they're shooting it, like w w where we saw in, in that cut, cut of Raban, they didn't actually show that the, the moment of the beheading, but it felt just as uh, impactful and, and same with, with, with that, that scene. So I think that, that they've um, they filmed this in a, in a way where we'll, we'll, we'll feel like the, 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 the heaviness, like the, the evil of, of some of these scenes. Uh, but 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 at the same time, it's it's not done in a gratuitous, uh, unnecessarily uh, um, bloody way, like for the sake of showing violence uh, itself. Agreed. Yeah, it's definitely not a Saul movie where they do it on purpose <laughs> and being like, "Here, let me show you some blood and guts." I like you said, it's how it's shot and how much. Yeah, I feel like there should be a whole podcast about how movies get rated. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, I do think it's the, the right decision at the end. You, you, you don't want to exclude um, like, like the, the PG-13 audiences uh, in that way. I think that this is a movie that has to be seen like by, by as, as much people as, 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 po uh, as possible uh, teenagers as well. And let's not forget, like in the mid 80s, a lot of the Friday the 13 movies were rated R and they got away with a lot back in the day. <laughs> so uh, does anyone else think that might be still guard right there? It's tough to say. <laughs> Possibly. The, the fear on her eyes right there, just her face, like she knows that she's fighting for her life and so are her people. Because yeah. in, um, in the IMAX preview, it looked like Cheney was leading the assault. Hmm. So I wouldn't have expected Stilgar to be there, but right. it, one of the characters did look could have been Jam Jamis as well or Jamis um, right. in the IMAX preview. So he was definitely there. Yeah, he's in this yeah. trailer. I have a feeling he had the yeah. rifle. <laughs> so let me know if I can go forward, guys. Yep. Yeah. That shot right there, especially on IMAX. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Our first year of Arrakis. Yep. Yeah. Rusty. It should be. Or Caney. More Caney. And there he is. <laughs> the Quizad has her at himself. <laughs> so that brings that us might to... be the worst looking Timothy Chalamet free frame ever, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like we got kind of that shot of him waking up on Caladan in the original teaser. Yeah, so it's it's interesting because again, the opening to this trailer is very very much feels like a 
miniature version of the opening of the movie, which is smart, I think, to kind of get, you know, audiences inundated to what the world is like and where they're going to kind of take it. Um, I, I can't remember in the preview that we saw that or the, the opening 10 minutes, she says, you know, who who's our next oppressor going to be? And then hmm. it, you know, kind of hard cuts to Paul waking up um, on Caladan. And so the cat, his bedroom on Caladan is it, it looks di- completely different from this one. This is his it seems to be his bedroom on Arrakis. Um, and in the opening, yeah. So he's waking up. He's kind of having these visions or thinking of Chani. And here it's basically presented as like the same thing. Chani's narrating, and then she kind of addresses Paul, and then he wakes up like it was a dream, or he's like not really sure what to think of it. Yeah, and, and, and that point, from, from the Fremen perspective, the, the Harkonnens have, have been on Arrakis for over 80 years. Uh, Chani w- was saying, uh, you know, sh- she she doesn't remember a time w- when they weren't mm-hmm. there. And then, you know, so, suddenly they're, they're, they're all leaving and someone else is, is going to come from from their perspective. You know, it's more outworld. So what yeah. what difference is, is it going to make? Yeah. All right. Don't and then the, yeah, the, the opening shot of, of Cal then and some uh, pretty sharp flying. So, um, J- Johnny, who, who do you speculate is is in that? Uh... Um, well, the way that it looks with the flying and the way, and I really want to see what that ship design looks like. But yeah. the way that with the flying, to play it slow like that we can yeah. do, it, but it's not <laughs> letting us. But between, well, there's a shot in I'm the preview. Sure it's Poe Dameron in that shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, best pilot in the galaxy, right? <laughs> um, but it's actually interesting because uh, in the IMAX preview, um, or I think because with the behind the scenes stuff that they showed, they had actual shots from the movie kind of sp- spliced in between. There is a shot where you kind of see a vehicle that looks very similar to the one that was in that shot kind of coming in and landing inside like a hangar bay. Um, so I, and I think that might be leading into what we're seeing right here. So I think it's Duncan. Um, and I think that that's going to, you know, He's a hot shot kind of, you know, cool guy. He's, he's the, the, you know, for lack of a better comparison, maybe the Han Solo style character of this movie. Um, so I think that makes sense for it to be him. Could be someone else, but. Yeah, I think that, that's that's one possibility or, or otherwise it, it could be um, uh, Duke Leto like uh, heading ma- 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 uh, maybe to see like the other part of uh, Caledon where, where they're at mm-hmm. the, the tombstones. I guess that would be like yeah. pro- probably a bit of a ways from the castle. But yeah, it, from from the cut of the trailer, it definitely does does suggest that it's uh, some uh, pretty hot shot flying there. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I think this scene. By the way, love the flight suit. The flight suit because it feels. <laughs> I hate using the word human or our time, but it feels something from our past. Mm-hmm. And spoiler ahead. Dune will eventually reference our our past in later books. So I uh, feel, and I love the lack of technology again. They could have done some crazy spacesuit, but no, it looks very hodgepodge, kind of put together. Mm. And these people have money, so you would think it would be nicer. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I mean, if is, you if if you put this design into like a like a Mission Impossible movie or something. Like, I think it would fit right in. Like, you wouldn't be like, oh, that seems unrealistic or, like, futuristic or something. I mean, it's, yeah, pretty simple, but it looks, uh, you know, I think that's what we're going to be getting in this movie with Villeneuve and his his tendencies, but also combining that with some more spectacular designs. And I think this is the scene where probably Duncan and Paul see each other before Duncan heads out to Arrakis to... To be the the navigator, as I like to call it. <laughs> what do you guys right. think of Jason Momoa right here? He's so yeah, damn cool. <laughs> yeah, and he uh, he cracks a, a joke as well. Yeah, which uh, got a, a laugh in the in the screening I was at. <laughs> oh yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. I you, mean, you... <laughs> Go ahead, Marcus. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you, you can just just see the the relationship um, between uh, these two because that's talked about in, in some of the, the other books that you know Paul is, is growing up. He's a, he's the son of a, a duke, like uh, one one of the the most uh, uh, yeah in, in a noble house. So he doesn't have much much friends his his own age. Uh, so he, he has this this close relationship with with 
with Duncan, who's his, uh, his closest friend. And we see that in, in this shot and we'll see it like er, er, later in that, in that other shot that was in, in the first trailer, like this, this close bond, they, they feel comfortable um, with each other. Like uh, Duncan, even though he's, uh, he's serving the Duke's family, you know, he, he feels, you know, he, he can make a, make a joke and, and tease Paul. So it's, uh, I think that this, this is really good, good characterization that, that we're getting at uh, probably early in the movie. Yeah, and this, uh, this set is huge. I think uh, yeah. I need to add. I mean, it's it looks like a real military uh, facility. It's an in, uh, interesting thing as well, given um, Paul's what he's wearing in this scene. I'd be curious to to know if this is before or after the Gamjabar um, scene, because it looks like he's wearing the this, this same thing. Um, so, just something to to think about. It'd be before that Duncan is telling him that he's heading out and then he's like, well, I have to go put my hand in a box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, very well, yeah. But you're right. I, I love that you get to see their friendship and I love that Paul opens up to him about his dream, even in the yeah. trailer, kind of like, hey, these people are going to be very crucial yeah. and I'm 95% sure that's that's Duncan right there. Yeah, it certainly seems it. to be. Yeah. yeah. And there's some extra dialogue that I don't remember, like the whole entire thing about dreams mm. and being awake. I don't remember that in the book. Does anyone remember that? No, I mean, I, the, the... It, it just seemed familiar. I was going through um, the book uh, this morning and uh, some other references. Because it seems familiar to me from somewhere, but maybe I'm imagining it, but I can't find it in any of the books. Yeah, I, I, it stood out to me as well. It sounded familiar, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it's something original. It just came up for this scene, because this is, again, I mean, it's not a scene from the book, so it makes sense if it was something invented. Marcus, what were you going to say? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, l l like we saw in the basically the beginning of the, of the movie, there, there's uh, a lot of scenes that are expanded on, like that they've taken the time to to introduce the characters, uh, build those those relationships, give the characterization. Um, so I think we, we will s uh, see some things that are definitely expanding on on the beginning of the book, which uh, where where we we, we were. Um, yeah, not always always seeing, you know, how how close that relationship was in, in the first book. Yeah, and that that relationship is very crucial for later on. Hmm. And there's the little joke. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we had a good laugh at our theater when we saw it, and there he is, Mr. Denny Nelanov. Velanov, Nelanov. <laughs> I know Marcus is a big fan of these shots coming up. I love those shots. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just just the the scale of this uh, the ship that we're uh, that we're seeing. I mean, we're, when you look at it the first time, you know, it's it's like okay, that looks big, but then uh, you look down lower on the screen and you see that those are all like people, like form, formations of the of the trays that are waiting to re to receive the the delegation. I mean. As as I was saying before, they weren't exaggerating. The, the scale of these the ships, the locations, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's mind blowing. Yeah. yeah, I hope the front legs hold up, otherwise it's going to flatten a legion of aged trainees right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Speaking to what you know, Marcus was just kind of talking about the, and I don't think this this shot doesn't even really give you the sense. Uh, one of the things that we saw in the first ten minutes was. When the you can and you see it for a split second here, um, but the ramp lowers um, yeah. to let them you know walk out. And there's a shot that's kind of on the ground level, looking at them as they're walk, walking down the steps. Um, and you can, I mean, you can really just tell how immense this ship is. And and the craziest thing is that this is not even close to the biggest ship that they show in this movie. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a good little little taste of of what is to come, though. And this this huge ship, it's gonna fi uh, like fit in like one small corner of of the Guild Highliner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Sorry, Vader. You think your Star Destroyers are big, but <laughs> they're a little bit bigger. There yeah, here, is. Here's our, our introduction to, to House Atreides. Uh, yeah, Oscar Isaac is is Duke Leto. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we've, we've been introduced to the... Definitively. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we we saw the as as mentioned, like the, this trailer is is telling a, a story. So we've been introduced to the Fremen. We've seen the cruelty of the um, of the uh, Harkonnens, and now we're seeing like House of Treides, the these these no, noble people, um, and we see we see the the, the line of uh, of uh, of the Duke there, like he's 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 standing there, like uh, confident, uh, bald, like the sense of sense of honor, like. Uh, in 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 reality, they they don't have a, a choice, like uh, you know whether they're going to Arrakis or not. But uh, you know th this is all like an extravagant uh, yeah. uh, ceremony. But you know, like he's he's facing this with with full full confidence. I want to grow my beard like Oscar Isaacs. I'm just saying. <laughs> There's Lady Jessica. Ooh, look at that look that she just gave them. Like, mm, I don't know about this. <laughs> And you can see the Benny Gesserit logo on a dress there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I love the blue once again. Danny's showing us blue, very subtle, but the color palette for this movie is just gorgeous. And yeah. Johnny, on, on that that scene, what are your thoughts on like sort of the interactions between uh, how we see her between uh, Duke Leto and Lady Jessica, and also we saw in the in the main film like how you know, the characters look at each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's something I wrote about, um, you know, right after I saw it was that the first, I mean, the first 10 minutes in general, but this scene in particular, they do such a good job. It's, it's wild because none of the stuff is in the book, of course. Um, so they're really kind of, they are doing like a true adaptation. Like they're changing things to fit, um, you know, for a film and, and a wider audience. Uh, but I mean, you get a quick exchange between Leto and Gurney where, you know, he's like, hey, Gurney, like Gurney, you know, I because he and the fact the funniest part of that scene is that he isn't looking at Gurney when he says that he just kind of whispers <laughs> it out of the corner of his mouth because he know he doesn't even have to look. He just knows that Gurney because they've known each other for so long and he knows his personality. He's going to have like some sort of ugly scowl on his face. Um and of course, Leto wanting to be the gentleman and the leader, he's like, "Hey, like, let's you know, let's try to show something different for uh, the you know the guild or the the you know the emperor's envoy." Um, but uh, there's that, and then right after that, you get Leto kind of asking uh, uh, fear a question about something to do with like inventory or like kind of like taking stock or something, and calculating. And he does you know his quick calculation. It's very like. There's no, there's not a lot of like personality to it when he's going through the information. He's just quickly like, you know, digesting it and, and calculating. And then he gives, you know, Leto the answer that he he's looking for. Um, and then you have this look between Leto and Jessica where, you know, I think it kind of says it all. It's just kind of, uh, you know, it, it, that no one wants to be in this position, but that's what they have to do and they're doing it. So um, it's great. It's just so very very uh flu you know fluid and uh again i think practical uh, as far as you know bits of dial and and the thing between gurney and uh you know leto again was a little bit of, of humor injected into uh what is otherwise a pretty dour um and, and maybe a you know dark story so yeah, let's go to the next scene so very much same, pretty much I feel like it's shot for a shot of what we saw in the original mm -hmm. teaser, Paul and Gurney training, which once again, for people that have, might have not seen the first trailer, Gurney explaining to him, hey, these guys are bad. You don't <laughs> want to mess with these. There's that, the ceremony shot, as I like to call it in my head, and the scale of that shot. And just the costume design. The costumes, man. Yeah. And but the people in the background, you can see the masks and the helmets and the different, uh, you know. Not, this is the only guy, I think, that comes out whose face is uncovered. Uh, even 
and really the only other people whose faces you can see it to any extent are the uh, Bene Gesserit uh, women, it seems. And they, even that they have some veils uh, that you can, that you can see through, but yeah, this guy, I mean, he, he's, uh, he's, he's all about his business. It looks like. So, yep. So what's interesting um, when we saw the screen, I was with Marcus, but my girlfriend brought up, is that spice in their helmets? Uh, because these are these are mem members of the um, of the guild, so these are probably early stage navigators, or at least people who are um, in, involved in, in supporting the, the actual navigators. Uh, of course, I, I don't think we'll we'll see the the full um, uh, evolved <laughs> navigators in, in this film, or or maybe even the next film we'll, we'll we'll see. But yeah, I think that this this definitely give, gives a gives a hint of like how key the spice is. Uh, in the interstellar travel. Yeah. Look at that face on Josh Brolin also. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, someone compared on Twitter, you know, uh, Duke Leto's Atreides from the 84 film and from the 2021 film. And uh, I don't know if that's a little bit of homage or it's, that's just, you know, what a, a Duke looked like. But <laughs> yeah, it's very, very to... similar for sure. Definitely. Not like the William Hurt character. <laughs> so I am smiling. And I love that you can that see got a laugh too. Yeah, I love that you can really see his scar right there. <laughs> but sadly he he will always be Thanos for me. <laughs> More of the ship coming down and the scale of the ship again. Yeah. I know the the very first rank you can you can see that the uh, Navi the guild highliner is hollow. Well, you can see all the way through it. Yeah, yeah. This is likely the the Bene Gesserit uh, ship arriving on Kalina. Yeah, this feels very close to the opening shot that we were talking about. Also, yeah, yep. Stuff that we saw in the teaser, and I've said a million times with the costume design on all of them. Yeah, and I just love this this the way you know just just with a look between like father and son, like how it, it just says says so much. The expressions on mm -hmm. on the faces, how um, I guess uh, Lito is looking with with con concern and and hope for for his, his son at the same time. And also, I think there's part of Lito that's like, I hope I'll make you proud, Paul. I hope <laughs> this legacy that I'm leaving for you, you know. And there's there's one of the best scenes. If you saw the IMAX preview, you know what that is. <laughs> Donnie, what did you think of that scene? Yeah, um, you know it's interesting because I think uh, I mean it was amazing. Um, just the the effects and the music, and um, I think we've even gotten the track from this uh, scene uh, released already. Um, it sounds beautiful, but it's going to be even more, I think, uh, captivating in the actual film because the way I've always thought about it or imagined it, and even I think you get the same sense when reading the book, is it's kind of like this long, kind of drawn out like set piece where, you know, they're going out into the desert, they're leaving in like this kind of convoy and they're flying through and it's their first time being out there together and then they kind of come across this harvester and then they, you know it's going wrong and there's the carryall isn't you know anywhere to be found or isn't working um and then the worm is approaching and then it comes into this whole like rescue operation um that culminates with the uh, attack and, and the the eating of the harvester so i think it's um it it's going to be interesting to see it in its full length um because i think and this was something we had been talking about was I think the buildup when you include that is going to really even heighten the tension of this more. Cause when you're, when you watch the scene and when we saw it in IMAX, I mean, I was on the edge of my seat when Paul was like, he was still not getting out of there as the, the worm was like bearing down on them. Um, and Gurney has to kind of come to the rescue, but yeah, this is uh it's going to be special. And, and I think the fact that Villeneuve even said himself, you know, this is one of his, you know, favorite uh, sequences and one that he's most proud of. And that's something he even said last year, I think in an, in an interview um, speaks volumes about it. And anyone, 
anyone who hasn't seen it yet is going to be uh, uh, pleased with it. Totally. And, you know, we're a third of the way through the trailer, and this is probably the, the first scene that's fr directly from the book. Mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. a, a core, it's a core scene that every adaptation and attempted adaptation has included. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> essential viewing, I think. The black game shot as before. I know you. I love that show, Paul. Yeah, and I think th this this scene that we're seeing with the the new one with with Chani looking at uh, at Paul smiling, I think that that's when they when they're first get, getting that uh, that connection. This is this is likely when when they meet in in person, uh, pro probably after after the um, the skirmish that they have with the Fremen, and likely before. Yeah, l l likely before the fight. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Paul's little. Acid trip with the spice right there. <laughs> More. Oh man, I love that shot. That shot right there. Yeah, that's. I mean, look at the effects. I mean, the sand. I can't even imagine it having to uh, to come up with that. One of the few looks that we really get of the Baron. But we don't really see him. More explosion. This shot now. This might be one of my favorite shots of the whole trailer, which I think is just absolutely gorgeous. And now, I, can we go into spoilers for the book, Marcus? Yep. Is this around the water of life, maybe? Yeah, here here we're seeing um, Lady Jessica. She already has her uh, her blue and blue eyes uh, mm -hmm. tattoo markings. So th this this could could be a, a vision of the future, or or indeed yeah. potentially the Water of Life scene. Uh, she has got the uh, the mentat lip as well. Oh, oh yeah, the stained lip. So yeah, it's just a beautiful shot. Just the way it's framed. Yeah, oh, actually looks concerned there. By the way, <laughs> Johnny, did did you have any thoughts on that shot of Jessica? Um, I mean, it definitely sh struck me when I saw it uh, the very first time in the theater. Um, I didn't expect to see anything like this um, at, at any point in this movie. The coloring of it, I mean, I mean, she has the blue eyes. She has all these different markings on her face. I thought, I don't know. It could be water of life related and it could be actually in the narrative of this film. But to me, it, it seems like a vision of some sort. I think it's, it seems like it would be so far into the future that I can't see it uh, realistically fitting into this movie. But I mean, getting this visual at the very least is exciting. Uh, Paul, I love this exchange right here. She's telling him that he's got to face his fear. And I don't know if anyone else caught this, but it sounds like she might have like the slightest accent or something she's doing with her voice. Um, I, I had someone had to point it out to me before I really like registered it. But this line in particular sounds like it. It doesn't sound like Zend how Zendaya normally speaks. I and, and, and it's interesting, like with with her uh, ha handing Paul the. Um, the Chris knife. So this is likely directly before the before the fight. But but the way she's she's talking to him, it sounds like they've already had a chance to uh, to speak with each other and like at least form that that initial initial connection. So it's, that's uh, that's quite exciting. Oh yeah. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the fight because the next shot. I'm ninety five percent sure that's that's who. I think we all think that is right. Yeah, uh, I yeah. think that this is pretty much Jameis. I don't think this is the the scene of the fight. So, like, come with me. I, I doubt it. he's saying that to Paul, but this is probably like one of the earlier scenes. Potentially, potentially he was fighting side by side with uh, with with Cheney in in one of the, the earlier scenes, or or with with Duncan. Yeah, this. Uh, 
I have no idea again where this could fit in to the the story. I mean, again, they're doing so much different stuff. And there's no real way to know. Um, it's very. I mean, this was actually. It, it's. I mean, the, it's probably one of the simplest shots in the entire trailer. But it really stuck out to me. Oh, not the most, but one of the ones that stuck out to me the most. Just the uh, that that depth of field and the coloring and the eyes. It's really uh, the way it's lit. Um, you know, with his, you know, his skin and everything, it definitely, you know, is striking. Um, and I'm curious to see again with that lighting and the color that they're using here, maybe it's not real. Maybe it's part of a vision potentially um, again, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Well, let's remember Paul and Jameis were friends. Paul was a friend of Jameis. Let's not forget. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> There's what I think is probably the beginning of the fight. Yeah, now, probably. Fun fact, Marcus. Can I mention our little giveaway right now? Sure. So we all got some really cool IMAX posters, and uh, I have an extra one, and we're going to do a giveaway. So the goal is the first person that <laughs> what comments on YouTube. Are we doing that, Marcus? Or, or, or maybe let's let's do a, a random selection. So we'll, we'll give right. like a couple of days. So so let's say like um, uh, in the first uh, three days of, after this this episode hits, we'll, we'll look at the comments and then like uh, uh, do a random uh, giveaway. Okay. What was the original release date for this movie? What was it supposed to be? Answer that, and then you'll get one of those IMAX posters. <laughs> Not October twenty twenty one. Now, this shot is just more beauty and yeah that's uh wow <laughs> yeah and, and I, yeah I, I love that that scene of the trady soldier in, in full full armor like that this really gives that like that feudal uh feeling like these are these are soldiers in in full full battle armor um like the in in a way it's it's, it's stylish in a way but also practical for uh, for the combat uh, style. And then if you needed a reminder how big this movie is. <laughs> <laughs> and again, th these these huge frigates like they're, they're all tucked into like once one side of those the highliner that we saw earlier. Now this might be one of the darkest shots of the trailer. I mean, the the burning was pretty bad. But this is this is beautiful in a gothic type of way. What do you guys think and of the uh, the, act, the actor that plays that Sada Car has uh, now changed his IMDb picture to that um, picture? Uh, <laughs> uh, I would. I, too. I can't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's... I, that's again. I'm amazed what they're able to get away with in this movie. <laughs> And the Harkonnen seem to be wearing some sort of masks that cover the the mouth, and yeah. we saw that uh, we saw a clearer shot of a Harkonnen with that mask on in the preview. Yeah, and I love in both the, the, these uh, these scenes, like we're seeing it with the Sardaukar and, and the Har Harkonnen, uh, like the religious uh, aspect as as well. So like the, the, these aren't just like faceless uh, soldiers like the the Sardaukar, but they they have this. Like uh, these these rituals, like these uh, beliefs that they've been indoctrinated in uh, from a, from a young age, like being being trained on one of the, the harshest planets in, in the universe. So this looks like the beast talking to the emperor. Once or again, to the Baron. Yeah, sorry, Baron. I meant Bernie. Look at the emotion in his face right there. <laughs> Just. These are not good people, Paul. We, we, we already saw that. We already saw that, like earlier in the trailer, like those, those all the the acts of the Harkonnens and like uh, uh, Gurney is is talking about. You know, th these are these are animals. We we've never met people like this. And then you see the the shot of uh, of the beast. <laughs> I felt that they they really cut that yeah. very well. <laughs> Look at the costume on this guy. Like what? Even just this right here i'm not gonna lie 
this right here, this shot does make me think Star Wars Episode Two: Attacks of the Clones a little bit. <laughs> but in a much darker scale again. And Mark, what are your thoughts on the on the Sardaukar in general for this uh, uh, this adaptation? Um, yeah, they they look pretty uh, scary, being uh, blooded in some sort of evil ritual. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them fight uh, Duncan later on in the well, a little bit later on in the trailer in the film itself. Yeah, and th this this scene like th this this reminds me of of Lord of the Rings like w when you think about the, the scale like the, the those armies, and like to, to think like this is a, a field full of of Sardaukar, like individually like the, these are you know the the most feared warriors in in the in the universe <laughs> they they've been you, you know uh, just a legion of these can 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 be sent down to, to wipe a noble house. And like you're seeing, like all all of these in in one uh, one screen, getting getting ready to uh, uh, to attack. And uh, real quick, one thing I'm curious about to see in the final film is, you know, as you were pointing out, yeah, these are the the best in the universe at uh, you know at fighting, and they're feared for a reason. They do you know the emperor's bidding. Um, but it's it, what's interesting about that, and it's the same way in the book, but. So far from what we've seen, they are, you know, whether it's a vision or whether it's in, you know, the actual plot of the uh, this first film, is they're fighting, um, you know, they're fighting Duncan and they're fighting, um, you know, the Fremen in some, in some shots and scenes that we've seen. And of course, when they're fighting Duncan and the Fremen, I mean, they're going to get obliterated for the most part because, the, the, I mean, those are the top, top, top guys. Um but so how are they going to show them and show just how good they are at fighting? Like we need to see them, you know, just tearing through whether it's Atreides, Harkonnens, whoever it might be. That's something I'm going to be interested about. I'm sure that's something that's really going to be, you know, a focal point of the actual attack on Eric Keen. Um, you know, probably before Duncan shows up they're probably just going to be, you know, tearing through guys. And then that's the one guy that they can't take down. Yeah. And that, that's, that's mentioned in, um, there, there's actually one of the, the comics that is coming out uh, next week, uh, blood of the Sardaukar. And that goes into the, the backstory of one of the Sardaukars who was basically leading, the, leading the attack on, on Eric Keen, And you get into their, their background, the, the culture of, of the unit. And like that, that specifically mentioned like how the, the Trades uh, warriors, they're, they're some of the, the best, but they're no match for the Sardaukar. So I'm oh. looking forward to how they, they handle that. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. <laughs> now, this shot is very interesting to me. I can't tell what this is. Mark? Um, I know what it is, I believe, but um, that's perhaps a little bit spoilery. So, uh, <laughs> All right. I but think, it's, uh, it's uh, as, as we saw in the uh, as we saw in the preview, Paul has got a pretty nifty hologram device. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's the map of the golden path. I don't think it's... <laughs> I don't think no, so it's, it's it's not a vision. It's uh, it is a hologram. But what Paul is looking at is perhaps a little bit spoilery to talk about. Okay, you can tell me off air. <laughs> okay, we'll do. Love this shot, also. Yeah. So on the Dune movie website, which updated yesterday following the trailer drop, there's a whole raft of new pictures that we've not seen before, not even in the trailer or the preview, and there's some bios of the characters. And for Dr. Yui, it says he has the ability to diagnose people by touch. Mm -hmm. um, so that seems to be what he's doing here. He's just putting his hands on Paul and being able to figure out the problem. Yeah. Now, this is just creepiness. Yeah. So what's going on on the Baron's back? Are those suspense lights or is that just his costume? Yeah, so I think that's definitely suspenser related technology. I, I would imagine, um, given his size, that because uh, usually, you know, in the book at least, susp suspenser belt is like the go to, you know, tech with that. Um, 
But then the Baron, he's going to have something that I guess would be <laughs> structured around his entire body, whether you know it's up his back like it is here, around his chest, around his waist, his legs. Um, so I'm going to be curious. It's cool, though, because he is fully cloaked, but you can still see the lights glowing through. It's a pretty... Uh, it's an interesting yeah, little visual there. And poor Piter. <laughs> I don't think you would want to be alone in a room with him. <laughs> <laughs> with either of them, really. <laughs> right, yeah. Love the darkness of this set, and all you pretty much see is their heads. Yeah. And I got to mention also, I don't know, you know, you guys might have hit on this yesterday, but when we saw on the IMAX, I think it might have been something that was, again, spliced in with some behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. This this room, this chamber they're in right here is huge in the movie. Like there's a shot, I believe it's kind of like at a high up in the air and it's down a ways from where this is. Um, but in the same room and it's yeah, it's like a it's a cathedral esque uh, space. on to the next frame so i think this is leto realizing that the attack is happening and sure it makes us think that way the way it's cut but right any thoughts yeah well he's wearing the same looks like he's wearing the same shirt that he gets the the red handprint on later mm -hmm. on yeah, yeah marcus yeah, this this is a point where like absolute chaos erupts in the in the trailer, like the the, the attack. We get to see the attack very much again, like the first trailer, that shot. Bernie realizing, yeah. not good. So that shot makes me think he's looking at the Death Star every time I see it. Yeah, <laughs> but. Yeah, um, but I guess it shows just the sheer scale of the Highliner. If that's in orbit around the planet, <laughs> and you can still see <laughs> the shape of that. That's amazing. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll see a closer shot of ships coming out of it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh. So I, I'm a big Duncan fan. Duncan is my favorite character <laughs> in all of the books. I am very excited that we got to see a little bit more of Duncan in action, especially in these upcoming shots. But these are just. And I, yeah, and I got to say, just real quick, this is a shot that we saw in the first trailer as well. Um, and, and the first trailer was, again, I, I really liked that trailer, and I thought the effects were just, you know, outstanding. I mean, they somehow, I mean, this is like more than twice as good as how they looked in that for i mean the just the explosion and the fire and the flame and you can see you know the smoke rolling off of uh you know with the shock wave it's i can't i just can't wait to see this whole thing like in imax i mean it's gonna be it's gonna be uh pretty pretty special yeah it's very apocalypse now also mm. yeah, and we see under under reactions how they, they they have been taken completely by surprise it's like you know they, they have to uh react quickly like just get every everything uh together try to put up some some defenses and there they go yep oh man oh, yeah. seeing it in wow. slow-mo is <laughs> even nicer oh man and the yeah the scale of that okay look at this real quick okay first uh because i i really was looking at this shot a lot yesterday so i, I but this i mean the way that this um, I guess Atreides kind of like carrier troop carrier, this thing that they, uh, you know, you saw them earlier, you saw how big they were. Um, and those, the well, you, ways, can see, like, you can see people just at the bottom yes. left. Exactly. Yeah. Look at the, uh, yeah, the bottom left corner. I mean, I didn't notice that the first time, or even the first few times I saw it, but I was looking at it yesterday. I really noticed. Yeah. I mean, there's a huge group of people over here and they're, of course, now they're going to be running away because this thing is exploding. <laughs> but like the, uh, so there's yeah there's the scale of the people there and then just the actual effects of this thing blowing up and and just splintering apart i mean there's so much tiny detail it's i unfat like i really just can't even fathom how they went through uh and 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 did that yeah and then here we get the, those those lines that we got in the first trailer as well from from paul they're picking my family off one by one and then also the 
the line with uh, with Duncan, let, let's fight like uh, demons. Like we, we were speculating earlier, like how do those those fit in the, in the movie? But given like the other changes um, that that they've done, like you know, may, maybe they they have uh, worked it into the into the story. We'll, we'll see. Because that, mm. that uh, you know, killing my family off one by one. Paul is sat in his bedroom on Caladan. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry, in uh, on Arrakis. You can see the mm -hmm. the fish uh, bedhead behind him. So, yeah, yeah. Is is he is he telling someone about a vision he's had? Yeah, yeah. It's tough to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's. I don't think he's talking to himself. But certainly, not no attack has happened yet. So we it must be exactly. into a vision. Yeah, Maybe he's talking to Lady Jessica and saying, and you know, sometimes mm -hmm. in trailers we get a line and it gets tweaked a little bit, yeah, just for the trailer. So maybe he is saying, "Hey, mom, I'm having a vision that they're gonna, yeah, take it down one by one." Mm -hmm. Definitely, I love this shot right here. Oh man, yeah, it's a good one. You're a badass right there. I love this mm -hmm. shot too. That's Duncan in that suit, isn't it? So the is eyes it? make. I'm pretty sure these are all uh, random. Are based on the uh, the chest markings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now I see it. My bad. Lido again. I have no idea where they're at, though. I will say that. I think this is after the attack, and she sees what happened. I think. This is the yeah. I think that, that's when the sand, sandworm is, is approaching. Yeah. So, so that scene that we saw. Yeah, and here here we see again the aer aerial combat with the with the ornithopters. So the, this is a, a different version again. Yep. It's, it seems like they have like uh, three or four different different versions of the ornithopter. Potentially some that are used more for transportation, some that are used uh, more more in battle. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the Fopter looks like it's flying into a sandstorm. So yeah. this is possibly Paul and Jessica trying to escape, maybe? Yeah, yeah. potentially. Well, they make us want to think that because of the upcoming shock. Yeah, the editing. <laughs> that might be one of my favorite shots of Paul right there. Wearing a face mask, very sensible in this day and age. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. This shot's cool. That's them. Um, Definitely leaving. Looks quite like demons. Yeah, and here we get all the all the action with uh, with Duncan. I think this is later on. Yeah. More, and this was in the early montage of the first ten minutes part. Yeah, yeah. Th this this is uh, one of the scenes where they're uh, the Fremen are preparing to uh, to attack the the Harkonnen harvesters. And and the yes. interesting thing they, they they appear to have uh, some uh, lace guns uh, themselves. Yeah. So is that ja Jamie's in the foreground? That's yes, what I definitely. was thinking. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's got the same sort of orange uh, headdress. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm almost certain that's Jamie's because you even you know there's this shot and then there's you know the trigger finger shot. Um, yeah. But this is from the, the opening of the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, shot. and this would fit in with that earlier scene from from Jameis. So, likely they're they're attacking the Harkonnens. Then they're you know they're they're mm. getting uh, like bombarded by by rockets. And then like Jameis has to uh, call potentially uh, Cheney to safety. Yep, come with me if you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a better view of the carryalls there as well. I think. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the lasers there. Yeah. And I think it's important if they introduce Jameis early on as someone that we should care about when yeah, for something sure. happens yes. again. Definitely. Dun Duncan. <laughs> I love this right here. Yeah. That's so yeah. Okay, so that's so funny to me because, like, it's, uh, I mean, he knows, you know, Duncan knows throwing that at that guy is not going to kill him or really hurt him because he yeah. has he has a shield um it's almost like you know just a distraction is he's now going to run up and, and fly use, and 
Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's I've, a, suspe uh, there's a, a suspenser right. belt there. Yeah, I'm going to say he's got the the red markings, which suggests that the Baron red lights are the suspensers as well, because Duncan's got the same. Yeah. And he and I love how oh, he yeah. just kind of like like the the gravity like automatically is yeah. uh, eliminated from the situation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like to call that scene the crouching hidden dragon scene. <laughs> and I can't wait to see, you know, we know the Baron has it for a fact, and we know we just saw Duncan with the suspenser there, but who else, you know, where else they might, you know, implement that and see that in some action or other otherwise. Yeah. Well, the first trailer, we had the Sardaukar falling slowly, didn't we? Yeah. I, yeah. Yep. Now, this is just beautiful. This is amazing. So that rock formation with the split in it, that is on the other side of that is Castle Caladan because we saw that in the previous trailer. Uh, okay. Yep, you're right. This is gorgeous, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. This is this scene when they're when they're leaving Arrakis, maybe like right. having a last last look at their planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can see. I mean, on the rocks. I mean, there's potentially that. You know, there's hundreds and maybe thousands of people. Um, seemingly you know buy. out there there's there's flags and and things like that that they have the people on the ramp i'm i'm going to be curious if we get you know we have the point of view shot of them looking down right here yeah. um you know maybe are we going to get close-ups of them uh to I, I would assume that is the family uh but you know very interesting i did not expect to uh to see that but that's really yeah. cool yeah because house of trades are of course going to iraq us with with their their army their their entourage uh potentially millions of people but still the, yeah. the population of Caladan is staying behind so basically they're the people right. who have ruled them for for uh, countless centuries are now uh, leaving so they're yeah. saying goodbye to their uh, uh, their duke I feel like this scene right here is a little bit before they take off mm -hmm. Definitely. I just love the dialogue between them yeah, yeah it's great it's very much the father caring about the son. Same child as we've seen before. Still beautiful. Yeah, I mean, the effects, yeah. Looking good. Definitely Paul and Jessica. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here we get a better, better view of her face. And it's good to see that they are using the, the masks out, out in the desert. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the big scene from the first trailer. Which was oh, the man. end shot of the first trailer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and Lido giving the advice to, to his son, like a, a great man doesn't seek to lead, he's he's called to it. Uh -huh. But uh, but most importantly, like he he's uh, to, to him as is that Paul is his his son. So I think that, that's a and that's a really really important moment. Yeah, so much that's foreshadowing a... right there in that line. <laughs> yeah. That's a great moment uh, in this trailer. It's a great line. Is that that now that line isn't directly taken from the books, is it? Not not directly. I um, so now. But it's definitely and that. So I was just yeah, I was curious because I know you guys are more familiar than I am. But it it certainly um, draws directly from Frank Herbert's yeah. uh, you know his his views and I think one of you know one of his most popular quotes is you know the power doesn't corrupt it's the corrupt who choose to seek power it, i think that's you know kind of a variation on that this dialogue right here very much makes me think of the sleeper must awaken one day mm -hmm. line that leto tells paul so that's the fight yeah that looks like jessica back there yeah good good composition now <laughs> what is this mask so do you guys think that's Leon Kynes right there yeah at least from when we see the view uh, of, her, of her face that, that definitely looks like uh, yeah. Sharon Duncan Brewster hmm what are those hooks for hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well here's the mm part and also Marcus how much can we talk about spoilers from the book <laughs> I'll, I'll say like for, from within the, the first book okay Obviously, just the original Dune part, yeah. you know, not children and all that. Yeah. Do you think this is when 
No pun intended. She gets to meet her maker. <laughs> it could be. I mean, do you think we're going to get that far into the first part? Yeah, I, I think so. Is that uh, after? Because I think I think we've been told that there are, we didn't. Well, we were originally told we didn't see any worms at all in the film, which no one believed, and thankfully <laughs> proved not to be the case. But uh, I I don't think we're going to see anyone interacting with the worm. Right. But my whole question is, does that scene happen after the fight or before the fight? I'm trying to remember. I think it's uh, well uh, before the fight. Which, no, which fight? <laughs> the, the, main, the main fight that we've been ramping on about without yeah. saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 possible it's it's late, but it it could be an an earlier scene, m m maybe when she's uh, she's traveling. That's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, I I don't think they'll actually show like uh, how she travels, but uh, okay. yeah, <laughs> might be hinted Beautiful at. Beautiful shot, also right there. Yeah. Some shields doing better than others, it looks like. Yeah. Well, some people have graded their shields. <laughs> More Lido looking worried. <clears throat> I mean, it might be just because I'm a big Oscar Isaac fan, but I have a feeling he might get nominated this year for this performance. He's looking great. Yeah. Um. It's an award for best beard in a motion picture. <laughs> oh, that that would be no contest. <laughs> what do you guys think about this little piece of dialogue right here, where he asks Jessica to take care of Paul no matter what? Yeah. Will you protect Paul with my life? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, and it speaks volumes about her, of course, but then also I think, you know, I think the way she she says the line uh, and like kind of her face and then the reaction to it, at least the way it's edited here, might be different in the movie. Um, it's almost like she feels kind of like offended. I feel like to an extent. Yeah, I mean, um, it's, and of course, it's not that, a question he he had to ask, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but I, of course, knowing their relationship and her, you know, her Bene, Bene Gesserit connections, it's there's definitely it's a loaded question and and a loaded kind of like response yeah. as well. And it kind of hints that Leto knows that things are going pear shaped as well. Yeah. <laughs> and then <clears throat> this is awesome. Yep. Yeah. One of the few times we really see Stilgard. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to see the, this this whole scene of of Jessica uh, best besting Stilgar. Like, I wonder, like, if if we do see like the the Benishes are training. <laughs> I definitely expect so. Uh, and I think really m part of the reason Rebecca Ferguson was probably cast was her her action abilities that we've seen in Mi the Mission Impossible movies specifically. Yeah. Yeah. This is an interesting. I'm not sure where this is supposed to be. It I'm looks not sure. like there's fire in the background. Could this be after? Okay. If we're, we're able to talk book spoilers, could this be when he, they are captive? Maybe. Maybe. During and after it, the attack, yeah. it looks like they're looking out of a Fopta window. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. kind of getting. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they, they may be yeah. bound at that point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this might be them actually in the vehicle flying out mm -hmm. potentially oh, yeah. the way it's yeah. edited. Yeah. Let's see if the, if we can see the design. Definitely looks Fopter. It's hard to say. It's definitely a Thopter. Yeah. There's the red hand. Yep. Blood, bloody. Yeah. And the shield didn't seem to be working too well on that one. <laughs> shield failure. I think this is after the Gondra bar. Yeah, or, or or before, I think or oh, you know, really? when, she, when she's worried about worried about like uh that that uh, Paul has to take the test. I think I have no, I I really am not sure if this is before, you know, what this might be before or after but just at a glance, I mean, this looks more like Arrakis to me, given yeah. the the set. Yeah. Um, 
but I don't know what could cause her to be so upset potentially. Um, There's but we'll one see. thing, but I don't want to spoil that. Okay. <laughs> More Duncan being Duncan. Sardaukar meeting their match. Yep. Once I mean, again, look at just, that. That design of that ship. The texture of that ship. And, and the, the puncture and the, the explosions. Wow. Big kiss. Now, I, this right here. I don't think great. we're going to get that much still guard. I really think he's going to might be in the movie for a good 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think you're probably right in thinking that. And if you look, <laughs> you can see Jessica right mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Very this much. Must be right be- before or after the fight with uh, Jameis. Yep. Yep. I think it's after the fight. I think it's. He turns around and then still guard. Yeah, potentially. Him. And Jessica is still very on the edge. Yeah, they're like, damn. <laughs> Okay, we shall call you Maldives. <laughs> oh and, man! Yeah, and here's the the big scene. Oh, look at them all pop out of the sand, dude! <laughs> Just absolutely craziness. So, <laughs> before we get to the shot, the money shot, I guess, of the trailer, what people are calling, have. I can't remember the name of the movie. I want to say it's called Keshrin. It was a 2006, 2004 Japanese movie based on a comic. And they had suits very much like this, but it was very insane. Does this movie <laughs> ring a bell to anyone? If anyone listening or watching knows what I'm talking about, please email me because I want to show like side by side the craziness of these suits <laughs> i'm not familiar with it but i don't yeah. doubt there's a i mean look at the you can see there's holsters on the back for you know chris knives you know potentially yeah. um or other other bladed uh weapons shoulder yeah, pads yeah. um so marcus's comment about this to me was what do you think this oh <laughs> let's keep it right there be, for a second yeah <laughs> Yeah, and, and I, I just just love love the, these uh, these armors of the of the Fedekin warriors. It like just yes. feels like these are the elite uh, of the elite warriors, like Paul's uh, yeah. Paul's apostles Death squad. <laughs> um, but Marcus, you told me this might be a vision, huh? Yeah. So so maybe let's let's go to that that shot. I love the visors on these as well. Yeah. <laughs> There's the golden suit. And uh, no one's wearing shields in the open desert. So yeah. at least not, not less. Yeah. Than. And look at that. Okay. Wow. I mean. Yeah. J- just in this, this shot, there's, there's <laughs> so more. So, so th- there we have it. We see, uh, we see Paul and he, he does have the, the blue and blue eyes. And th- this is, this is obviously like him. Him leading the Fedekin into battle against the uh, the Sardaukar. So yeah, what I was I was, I was saying uh, earlier to Simon, like my expectation is is that this is a vision where he's seeing like one of the possible paths uh, of of the future potentially, like when when they're going to be be leading their um, their crusade slash jihad against uh, the the Imperium. So like we're we're definitely not going to get to this this stage in, in the first film because the, the actual like uh, uh, f- fights against the the, the starter car and like the, the Harkons that's going to be be much later. So so this is yeah. looking ahead, but potentially like the, like that scene with with Jessica. Yeah. yeah. So he's, he's um, looking forward to his path in his golden suit. Yeah. Ah, right. Ah, yeah. Ah, um, one mark. Good one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, but I uh, this because uh, there was a very small portion of this in the uh, little teaser we got last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the yeah. IMAX event, and I think oh, I knew this. I could I could pretty easily identify the start of car, but these suits that they're wearing, uh, you know, I wasn't sure. It, I assumed it was some sort of variation on the Fremen, um, but I never expected it to be uh, 
the <laughs> Fede Kin and, and having, you know, this be into the future. Um, so when they, when they showed this, uh, you know, saw it the first time at the IMAX. Um, yeah. I mean, my jaw was like fully on the floor. I mean, <laughs> it already was, but like this uh, was not anything I expected to see in this movie. And it was very much, uh, I was like, if, you know, if this is the only movie we get, I'm glad we got to see some sort of, Fede Kin action and and uh, them you know just destroying the Sardaukar and and these designs are very cool and I would love to see um, more of that. Of course, I'm sure if we do get that part two, I mean they might be he might be wearing this the majority of the movie um, potentially. So this is uh, very cool. And then of course in the background, which can so easily be forgotten and or ignored or or overlooked. Um, yeah, that is a very large uh creature coming out of the sand <laughs> right? it looks like um that is not a person that is not a a fremen that is a absolutely the mouth uh of a worm partaking in uh in some battle so yeah if we get if we get uh a part two this is just a very small taste of potentially you know return of the king size style battles with regards to the number of fighters and and use of you know creatures and things like that yeah, you know, the, the scale of the potential battle at the, at the end, that's going to be, be amazing. Yeah. So here's my crazy um, brain working. The choreography looks amazing. Also. Yeah. Here's my crazy brain working. What if the end is Paul telling um, Zendaya that he yeah. has a vision? It could and, be. Yeah. And this is what he's visioning. Ooh, and then fades man. to black <laughs> and then gives us a release date like <laughs> part two the jer- if you want to see part two please go see this movie again yeah. and please subscribe to our GoFundMe or Carter <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but what I if mean, it fades to black with this being the last shot of the movie oh, man. and then it says to be continued very much back to the future style yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I know, Johnny, we didn't talk about it with you, but mm-hmm. you did see in the opening credits, it does say part one. It sure does, yeah. So yeah. I think that you would know? be the cliffhanger, like, better than Luke, I am your father, better <laughs> than anything of that being like, what just happened? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, you might be on to something. I'm not going to, I don't think we're going to get a release date necessarily or anything <laughs> like that. But I do think that could very well be an ending that would, uh, you know, be satisfying and, and uh, a good way to tie people in and, and to keep them hooked and, and interested to see that, uh, you know, brought to uh, completion. It always surprises me when trailers do include the last frame of the film. Well, yeah, I don't think that would be the last frame, but I, I could see that in some sort. Like this yeah. could be part of something that could be the last frame potentially. Yeah. When, when you know we might see what they're looking down at or something. But uh, yeah. I mean, you know what? I just realized. I just made this connection. Okay, no one freak out, or maybe you guys have already made it. But go back to that last shot uh, real quick. The blue. Um, that one. This. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. I'm just going to say it as a theory. But so they, there's this bright white kind of background and they're wearing these long, it looks like black cloaks um, and they have the blue and blue eyes. So it's sometime in the future. But in the shots that we got of the, um, you know, there's that the ship earlier that we saw above Caladan. There's that mm. the shot, the low shot of like the black cloak kind of floating in the, in the breeze. Mm. Um, looking down, oh. I wonder if there's any connection there with regards to, you know, after, you know, when they're going on their jihad and they're expanding and, and going back to, you know, these worlds and taking over. I wonder if there's something here where this is okay. They're, and they're looking down in the shot as well. That's what made me make the connection. Um, and I don't know if you go back to, cause the, the background, um, of the ramp, if you look at it, yeah, I mean, that not- looks almost identical. Yeah. Um, so what and is this? Is all maybe these of, things, these people. Yeah, maybe these people. You know, it's kind of like a welcome back sort of thing yeah. happening <laughs> instead of a departure. You know, um, I think 
you know, that there, there might be, that might be one in the same and actually go back as well. If you could to the downward shot, uh, where you have the cloak kind of billowing in the wind and you you can see kind of the people it's coming up. It kind of matches. It does with at least the it? garment, the fabric and the, the color looks, you know, very similar. I mean, there's a lot of black cloaks of course, but, um, sorry, I'm right after here. It. It yeah. It's right after the ramp shot. Yeah. Cause it fades. Huh? Yeah. Right we'll there. It. I mean that, huh. yeah. Is that there a might be a case. Ball? the cloak pardon is there like a white atreides hawk on the oh, I think yeah it so be. i think uh yeah you can see the these flags or banners they're holding um i meant but, on the black cloak or, oh, i think that's oh, on the, cloak. the white yeah no, rippling. no. Rippling. i think it is the light yeah um but yeah no there's that's interesting <laughs> to say the least but who knows what what's going to happen? But Simon's got my brain working now about what we potential visions or endings that we might see, foreshadowings yeah. and all that. Yeah, and I, I really like the idea of that being potentially towards the end. But it could also work like earlier in, in the film, like you know, like mm -hmm. you know, as, as a real like Paul, like his first experience with the spice, and then he's seeing all the different uh, different futures options. Yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Denny Villeneuve has never done anything where time runs in a non-linear non nope, order, has he? No. <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> but Man. Oh, man, I'm so was. excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this has probably been our, our longest episode of, of Dune Talk so far. <laughs> yep. Rightfully so, I would say. <laughs> and also the Hans Zimmer music is just... Yeah, I mean... It goes without saying, but it needs to be said. It sounds pretty, pretty awesome. And the vocals, the way they're hitting it here at the end is uh, pretty awesome. So let's just do a final round table. Mark, final thoughts on, on the trailer? Uh, yeah, absolutely fan fantastic trailer. Uh, as I say, I sh showed it to the repairman this morning and he <laughs> never really heard of June and he, he wants to go see it now. So uh if, if it has that effect on everyone it's done its job um i'm very happy with it and i love the fact that it's full of surprises even though i've been following the production very closely and i know the source material very well there's a lot in this that surprised me and that's what i want to do i want to go and see a movie where anything can happen even though i know roughly where it's going to go yeah, totally. And just look like uh, how much all of us got got out of it, uh, like discussing it now. But I think when uh, people who aren't familiar with the, with this uh, with the story and the movie, when they see this trailer, uh, as I've written about, this is this is telling a, a narrative. Like you you see it the way it's been been cut from the beginning to end. This is this is telling a story, and I think it's really bring going to bring people in and want to to go see the movie, uh, mm -hmm. ho hopefully in the, on a big IMAX screen. Song, what what are your thoughts? Very much like Mark. I know the source material. I, like we said on the previous show, we're pleasantly surprised with all the twists and turns, and I'm loving it. And by the way, I just noticed that the see in, in theater and on, everything on the screen right now, except the HBO Max logo, is gold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is, basically. That's kind of like an Easter egg for Dune fans right there. <laughs> Yeah. Johnny, what are your final thoughts? Yeah, um, definitely echoing what the other fellows have said. It's uh it's a it's a fantastic trailer. I mean, I've seen it uh, I don't even I'd be embarrassed to say how many times I've probably watched it so <laughs> far, but um it's uh it delivered everything it needed to and more, I think. Um this is stuff that fans are I mean, clearly going crazy over. I mean, look at us. Um, but also general public, general audience members. I mean, as I've pointed out, and I've been talking about it a lot online and whether it's been on Reddit or Discord or Twitter, I mean, this, I mean, this thing was trending for like 12 hours yesterday, um, despite there was other significant movie news, there's other, you know, sports things going on. I mean, it, it was up and it was number one for like a long time. So um, thousands upon thousands of tweets and, uh, you know, millions and millions of views on there and on YouTube. Uh, I mean, there's been engagement with this that, you know, 
none of Villeneuve's other films have. I mean, every other Villeneuve film combined probably has not seen the level of engagement or interest. Um, and he's had some successful movies. So I'm really excited. I'm, I'm more optimistic than ever, as I've said. And the as you, you know, Mark pointed out, I think especially, and, and Simon echoed, there are a lot of surprises, even for people who are big fans uh, and people that have followed the production closely, you know, as I have as well. Um, and the most remarkable thing, and I tweeted this yesterday too, is this trailer is as spectacular as it is. The, the things that were most spectacular to me are the things that surprised and shocked me the most I haven't been shown yet. They, they are in the movie and they are mind blowing. And I, uh, n- no one, you know, you can have high expectations and I think that they will be met or, or surpassed by the actual final product. Yeah. yeah. Well said. So that was our, our show. That was a uh, Dune talk. Uh, so let's uh, start with you, uh, Johnny, where, where can people find out more about you? Yeah. Um, again, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. I'm sure this won't be my, my last visit by any stretch. Yeah, for uh, sure. Follow me on Twitter, Johnny Sobchak, S-O-B-C-Z-A-K. Um, you can follow me on Instagram too, if you'd like. Follow me on Letterboxd, same first and last name. Um, and I uh, have written for the site before, and I'm sure I'll write for it again. So, you know, stay tuned and always, you know, check in, see what I got cooking up. Yeah. Always welcome. Mark? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for having me back again um, after last night's epic. <laughs> Um, and yeah, pe- people can find me at juninfo.com and juninfo on Twitter, Facebook, um, in- Instagram, uh, YouTube, yeah. and, and uh, lots of books as well. Okay. <laughs> um, S Dowdy, so it's S D A O U D I on Twitter and Insta. Yeah, yeah. and this is uh, Marcus, so uh, you'll see a lot of my articles on dunewsnet.com and follow us on Twitter at Dune Newsnet, as well as Instagram at Dune Newsnet. So thank you all for joining this, uh, this exciting uh, episode of, uh, of the new trailer and looking forward to seeing you all on the next episode of Dune Talk. We hope you've enjoyed Dune Talk. Remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know when the next episode drops. Stay tuned to dunenewsnet.com and add us to your social feeds. Be the first to hear breaking news and reviews.